Hello everyone, my name is Anton. Another video and another board. And today I will tell you more about Radxan Neo 12L, uh, which is based on Mediatek Genio 1200. And it's one of the most problematic board I tested for the last time. And if this will be changed somehow, I will update you like in pinned comment and like here in the top right corner. And right now it's sad because this board has great potential, it's pretty fast uh, and there are signs that it should be improved. But the situation right now in this moment is not very good. So let me describe the main problem with this board and uh, tell you more about what you will see in this video. Uh, to run your AI model, you should export this model in the format appropriate for the board. And for specifically for this board, there are two ways to do this. And with so sources from Radxe, it's possible to do this with the simplest one through TensorFlow Lite, which is almost unworkable right now. Like more than 80% network, I am successfully uh, exported them. There is a second way through special MediaTek uh, package, which MediaTek doesn't provide uh, freely. Uh, and they provide this only with formal NDA with MediaTek company. And of course, Radxa didn't provide this package. So right now, all that Radxa provide is not enough for uh, this board. I asked Radxa for the access, of course, but they just ignored all my question. MediaTek was much nicer. In this case, they answer all my requests. Uh, they said that right now they didn't provide this. Mm, they say that probably in the near future they will release all this part like uh, open source and recommended me to like write directly to Media tech sales or something like this. So I actually on the last as embedded world I uh, discussed a lot about this boards with one of their representatives and I had his visit card so I write him email and he uh, said okay it's possible of course uh, you should sign NDA and of course because of this NDA you couldn't like show on your channel uh, some code videos but you can freely like tell about your experience with this and in my opinion it's great but of course it's like formal procedure and I don't know where everything here will be worked so if there will be a new video, I want to do a new video, of course, if I will have an access and I will post this in the first com comment. Because in my opinion, like this board has much more potential than it has right now. Uh, but uh, let's discuss in this video how to run models right now. I will perform some tests to show that it's pretty nice board in terms of performance. And uh, also I will tell about other problems with this board and uh, limitations. So let's start. First of all, documentation from Radx is terrible. <laughs> I, it's, it's pretty often situation. Just a few basic words about flashing and so on. Uh, but the documentation from Mediatek is quite nice. Uh, and my initial expression was, here is a TensorFlow Lite example. Uh, and on the first glance, this was like, like, it's the same example like it was for NXP, which I was testing in my previous video. Mm. Okay, it should be like 20 minute adventure. Uh, how I was wrong, uh, there is the CPU delegate and uh, here is the GPU delegate. Uh, hmm, something strange about the NPU delegate. NXP has it, why it's impossible to have it right now? Okay, 
if there is no Python code, maybe there is like C++ examples, not in this instruction. Uh, what is this Python code? Then, wait a second. It's it's inference for this board on NPU, but it's not normal Python code. It's called for pre-built binaries. What? Should I put all my inputs on a disk in a file and collect them the same way? <laughs> it's terrible, but I can work with it. Uh, the logic is a bit complex, but of course it wasn't like performed. Uh, even if it like limitation by protection of source codes, it can be performed differently, not so terrible. So mm, let's try to run a few models. Mm, this one fail, this one fail, this one fail, this one fail. Oh, okay. Mm, so most of models, they didn't run through this example. And uh, this is uh, exactly what I started this video uh, from. I found a few models that are working. I checked like through. I didn't want to convert everything myself. So I ran through a few existing libraries with a lot of TensorFlow or light uh, models. Uh, but mm, Almost all detection models didn't work. There is an example with YOLO model in the documentation, but of course uh, it has a different way of the exporting. Right here it's a graph like how to export through TensorFlow Lite and through the second pipeline. But of course there is no example how to do this because all this code on this right uh, part is narrow pilot code and we didn't have access for it. Actually I found a one trick but I didn't want to test it because if you have an Azure account probably it's possible to export through Azure account your model but again I didn't try to do this. You have only two commands on this board they are pre-built and they can work with uh, one of them can export your TensorFlow Lite to your uh, special model. And the second one is can run your model. So it's ncnntf Lite command and narrow rt command. This narrow rt command, it could be used to run the model exported through TensorFlow Lite and through Torch script that was, uh, that's in second approach to export. What is interesting, mm, there are two different NPU cores on this board. It's MDLA and VPU, VPU cores. I don't know reason behind this, probably so it's some mm, history of this product because MDLA seem like much faster. Mm, like VPU is two times slower than CPU M and MDLA is 3.5 times faster than CPU. And uh, like definitely I don't want to use such slow cores for some code if there will be no big reasons behind this. Also, it's harder to export on VPU cores because they can run only int 8 models and Actually, I don't know because according to the documentation, there are two mm, MDLA cores and there are two VP cores. But in the code, I couldn't like choose which one is used like it was for rock chipboard. So maybe they are used simultaneously. So you didn't choose and it's automatically like running on the two cores. But it's pretty interesting. What is working through this TFLite approach, which is accessible to us? I found just a few models. From the detection models, it was only SSD. Uh, there was a few classification models like SqueezeNet, ResNext, and I think that's all, like a few classification models, one detection models, 
none of like point detection models work, none of well, like segmentation models work. So the scope is super limited and the errors they pretty often they didn't tell anything about the problem why this model didn't work. It's just a segmentation fault. And of course it's like unusable right now. Let's check what is available according to the guide. And again, this part will be more about what should work in the future, but it's not about what is working right now. And, uh, and according to the guide, there are like a list of pretty good models that's uh, like pretty actual state, not state of the art, of course, but like mm, pretty commonly used today, like YOLO V8, YOLO X, and so on. Mm, and uh, of course, I couldn't like check any limitation of these models. Uh, here is like official speed guide uh, from uh, this for this model from like uh, official documentation. As you can see right here is MDLA core. They are super fast. If uh, you check with my previous videos about rock chips, actually it's even fast. The speed of NPU core is super nice. Also, it's super nice that it could use like FP16. It's pretty rare for NPU chips. So it's look pretty nice, but only in the documentation and you can run this right now. So let's run through pluses and minuses. What is good? It's faster than rock chip RK3588. And as far as I understand, it's a little bit cheaper. Like this board is cost $100. And I think that the cheapest rock chip 3588, it's more around like uh, 120 or Summer, something around. Not only the NPU core is significant, like it's faster, but the CPU core is compatible. Like some benchmarking tests, they are showing the similar performance that a rock chip. There is an additional VPU model, so it also can increase your throughput. There is additional GPU which is like, there are a few examples with TF Lite, how you can run this. And it's better than it's for Rockchip, because for Rockchip you need to spend a lot of time to run your uh, GPU inference. And here it will be all out of the box. Energy consumption is reasonable. Uh, with NPU core, it's something around like 4 watts, with full inference like CPU plus NPU something around nine watts. The architecture and documentation are nice. Some of images are great. I need to admit that it's one of the best documentation about like internal structure of the system, which can give you a lot of hints and logic behind everything. It's super rare for a lot of different board. It's super nice that it should have native uh, torch script support because previously all the models they exported from Oinonix like or from TF Lite. But if this board really has fully workable torch script support, it can solve a lot of problems with your export. But again, I couldn't test this functionality. What is bad? Nothing is working right now except like few TensorFlow Lite examples. It may be fixed in the future, I hope, but right now it's a huge problem. Strange decision with the inference. Why is there is no normal library? Why there is such binaries line somewhere? Why is there is no normal C++ example. Maybe it's like in closed like narrow pilot access. I don't know, but right now I just need to spend, if I want to use this in production, 
I want I need to spend a few days to wrap up all this mm, inference pipeline with some like virtual memory when all these outputs and input will be stored. So not to lose the performance, I need to do a lot of work right here. Mm, it doesn't look production ready. Mm, the next minus, this board is huge. Here is like, for example, rock, uh, Raspberry Pi sized board and this one board. And the packaging here is not very dense. So I am a bit confused about this logic mm, because it, it definitely can be much smaller. The next problem is fast throttling. And it's a huge problem right now. There is no additional like, mm, I couldn't buy like fun for this board. And there is no like maybe some thermal radiator for this board. It's just not accessible on any stores. And science this board is, it's, has unusual format. I don't know how to fight with this. Of course, it's possible if you will spend some time, but right now, if you just want to use full power out of this board, it will be impossible, like a hobby product. Uh, some of these issues, of course, they are more like RADX related, the mm, MediaTek related. So maybe with the different MediaTek board, Mm, it will be better, but right now it's the only one board that is accessible for testing. What? But Radsk also has a lot of different issues. Like I already mentioned that documentation is pretty bad. Uh, official Git repo where there should be all the sources, it's also empty. Uh, there was a big problem with delivery. I was ordered my board in May in Ubuntu uh, in Ubuntu package and I received it like in August, in the end of the August in uh, Yocto Linux version. Mm, but they like warn me somewhere in the mid of the summer or they warn me that there will be no Ubuntu version for this board for now. Maybe it will be available in future, but right now it's still not available. So that's all. Right now, this board has like a lot in like mm, its promises, but right now it's mostly like unusual. Mostly because of Radx, in my opinion. Maybe partially it's because of MediaTek. At least they communicate and they work and on this problem. I hope they will fix this and I will reevaluate this board. Thank you for the for watching. Bye.